So this is a quick tutorial covering the functionality of the Ringmaster plugin for ZBrush 4 R8. After you have the plugin installed and ZBrush is launched, you simply just need to navigate to the Z plugin palette up here and open this up. And then in here, there'll be a Ringmaster tab, and this is where the plugin will be. Now I'm just going to come up to the top here and just dock this to the side by clicking this button. And now this is just taking the Z plugin palette and just put it over here. So the Ringmaster plugin will allow you to create a precise ring band base mesh inside a ZBrush without using an external application. If at any time you'd like more information on the functionality of Ringmaster, simply click the logo here and this will open up a cheat sheet. In here, there is various information covering all the functionality of the Ringmaster plugin. Now the usage of the Ringmaster plugin is extremely simple. You first just need to come over here and set the specific size, thickness, and width of the ring, and then simply click the Create Ring Base Mesh. Now your sizes of your ring can be set by US standard whole and half sizes, or a specific millimeter value. Now the US sizes are pulling the corresponding millimeter values from a text file in the Ringmaster plugin directory. This text file can be opened in any text editor, and in here you'll see it has the US sizes on the side, and then the millimeter values they equal. If you'd like to use your own custom millimeter values with these set sizes, you can modify this text file and simply save it out. Then the next time you use the US size and select a value here, it'll pull from the new information that you inputted. So let's say I want to make a ring now that has a US size of seven. So I'm gonna come over here to the size slider, click on this, type in seven, and then press enter. I'm gonna change my thickness here to say something like two, and then let's say I want to set my width in millimeters to four. Now after I have these main options set, there is a few more options here you can select. So I can open up this more options area here. In here, I can set how many sides I want the ring band to have. I can set how many width segments. I'm going to type in say three. I can set which way I want the ring to be aligned. I can activate creasing and polygrouping. I can mirror the polygrouping. And you also have the ability to append a new ring to an existing Ringmaster file. Now, after you have all these values set, we can simply just click Create Ring Base Mesh. So after that is clicked, you should get a new tool inside of ZBrush here set to these values we selected. So if I turn on my polyframes and then turn on perspective, you can see I have a new ring generated like so. And the inner dimension should be set to that size of seven. I should have a thickness value here of two millimeters and a width of four millimeters. And you also notice along the width here, I have three segments. Now, if I navigate to my tool palette and open up the subtool area here, you can see that there are three subtools generated with this process. So the first subtool here is the ring band. Above this, we have a mandrel, and this mandrel is also set to the specific millimeter size. And this can be used as a subtractive element to bring the ring back to its internal dimensions, or even used with masking to generate different ring effects. And then finally, you have a one inch cube as a placeholder on the top. So after you have quickly just created a ring with the Ringmaster plugin, you can now use any of the processes inside of ZBrush to detail this out. You can DynaMesh the model to use sculpting. You can even use things like the Z Modeler brush. So I'm just gonna select the Z Modeler brush quick by hitting B on my keyboard, isolating by the letter Z, and then clicking M. So with the Z Modeler brush selected, I can now come through and use the context sensitive properties of this brush to modify my ring band a little more. I can hover over one of the edges here and press spacebar to go in the Z Modeler edge action menu. In here, I can select the option of bevel, and now I can come through and bevel the edges of my ring a little bit. So just simply clicking and applying the bevels to those areas. I can also bevel the internal area as well. So now I've just softened up the shape of that ring some. I can also come across the top here and select a edge loop. So I can select this edge here, go into spacebar to go back into the Z Modeler edge action menu. In here, I'm gonna just choose the polygroup option and now just apply a new polygroup to this area by clicking and then pressing Alt to assign a new color there. Now I can hover over one of these polys and go into the Z Modeler poly action menu. In here, I can set my Z Modeler action to QMesh. I can set my target to polygroup all. And now I can come across my model and drag this out and start manipulating my form like this. So with a few clicks after generating the ring band base mesh, you can see I'm already starting to tailor a different shape or design with the ring. Now my ring isn't looking as smooth as I'd like it to right now. Now I could have increased the side slider over here before generating the ring mesh, 
Or at this stage, I can just apply some creasing and then activate dynamic subdivision. So I'm gonna turn my polyframes back on. I'm gonna go to the tool menu here. I'm gonna open up the geometry tab. I'm going to locate the crease area. In here, I'm gonna change the C tolerance to say something around 30, and then I'm gonna click crease. And that should now apply creasing to my model. So you'll see I have creasing applied across my mesh. And now I go to the dynamic subdivision area here and turn on dynamic subdivision. So now if I turn off my polyframes, I should get a ring result like this. So now I still have a low resolution version of my ring here, but it now has dynamic subdivisions applied, allowing me to see the mesh in a high resolution version without increasing the topology. So that's the basic functionality of how to use RingMaster just to quickly create a ring base mesh. Now there are some additional processes as well they can use with RingMaster. So if we navigate underneath the Create Ring Base Mesh, there is a Gemstones area we can open up. And in here, we have a bunch of different options that we can choose from to allow us to apply gems to our model. So in here, we can select a round gem, an emerald gem, an oval, a marquee, a pair, or a custom. And then below this, we have a millimeter slider here that will allow us to choose the size of the gem that we will be inserting. So as an example, I can select the round option here. I can set my dimension to be, say, two millimeters and I can turn off the on band option here, and now I can click add gemstone subtool. So this will take this round gemstone at two millimeters and create a new subtool with that gem. So you can see now I have that gem appearing in the middle of my model. If I navigate back to my subtool palette here, you can see that it's just appended a new subtool with that round gemstone. So using this functionality here, you can apply different size gems to your model and then switch to say the Gizmo 3D and move them around and position them on your mesh. Now in addition to just generating a new gemstone subtool and having being positioned in the center of the world, you also have the ability to apply gems around the band. So if I come over here and now say select the emerald gemstone here, I'm gonna change my dimensions to say 3.2 millimeters. And then I'm gonna activate the on band option here set this number to say eight, and then set the alignment to middle. So now with these options selected, if I click this add gemstone button again, it is now going to create a new tool, but this time it's going to use the array mesh functionality inside of ZBrush. So it's taken that emerald at that 3.2 millimeter value, and it is now arrayed it around the mesh. So now if I go to my tool palette, I can scroll down to the array mesh area, and now I can modify the array. So I can change the repeats to increase how many of these emeralds I want on my mesh here. And I can also manipulate the depth and other options of the emerald by simply going back to the Gizmo 3D, centering to the initial mesh, and then just using the Gizmo 3D to modify that functionality. So this is really handy for just adding gems quickly to a ring band. Now another nice thing about the gemstones option here is that you have the ability to add a custom gemstone. And this will look at an IMM brush you have selected. So I'm gonna come and select this custom option. And now I'm gonna to go to the brush palette again, and this time I'm gonna select the IMM Boolean brush. So this is an insert mesh brush that has been set up to use the live Boolean system. So I'm gonna to come to the top here, and I'm just going to select, say, this turn latch part. So now I have this brush selected, and I have this part selected, and I have custom turned on. So I'm gonna set the number here back to, say, 16. I'm gonna keep this to middle, make sure on band is on. I'm gonna set my dimension to say four, and then I'm gonna click add gemstone subtool again. This time, instead of adding one of the predetermined gemstones, it's now added the custom part that was embedded in this IMM Boolean brush. So you can see this turn latch option here has now been arrayed around the band. Now one thing that's nice about this is that at any time, you can activate live Booleans with the system. So I'm gonna come to my newly generated array here using that turn latch. I'm gonna set this to subtractive. And now I'm gonna come up here and simply click Live Boolean. This is now going to take that array mesh that I just created, and it's now going to preview it as a Boolean process. So it's going to subtract it from my ring band. Now, since this is still an array mesh option here, I can change how many of these repeats are happening on my mesh just by toggling the slider here. I can also go into the Gizmo 3D again, and then center that and start manipulating this on the fly as well. So I can start adding these different shapes or styles to my mesh. So as you can see, in a few clicks, I've just gone through and added greater complexity to this ring. And this is very handy using the new functionality of this live Boolean system inside of ZBrush 4R8.
So now I've created something like this. Now after you have this applied and you're using the live Boolean system, and anytime you go to the Boolean panel here, open this up, and simply click this Make Boolean Mesh button, and this will take what you see on screen and now generate a new true geometry mesh out of this. So clicking this button will now generate a new tool at the top, and here I have a solid mesh that has been generated from those Boolean processes. So now this is ready to be 3D printed. So that is one functionality you can use with the gemstone process here and custom IMM brushes. Now returning back to my original file, I'm just going to now select this mandrel tool here and just hide everything else. In addition to the gemstones and the base functionality, there's also a mandrel process. So if we come over here and click this, this will open this area here. And in here we have a thickness slider and an auto Z remesher button. So with the mandrel here, I can get out of perspective, and I'm going to switch back to, say, a standard brush. I can now divide this up a little bit. So I'm going to go to the tool palette, go down to the geometry tab here, and I'm just going to click divide a few times. And I want to get my active point count up to around 500,000. So now I've just tessellated this mandrel a little bit more. So now with this mandrel divided, I can now use masking, and I can quickly just make a pattern on top of the mandrel. So I'm going to hold control and make sure I have the mask pen brush selected. And now I'm just going to start drawing some lines on this. So just coming through and just drawing a little bit of designs here. You can hold alt to erase a mask after you have it applied. And kind of tailor the style here. But as you can see, I can just come through and quickly just using this mask option, I can start generating different results. You can hold spacebar to move the mask around. And so now I've just masked this mandrel out like this. So using masking and this mandrel, we can now use this mandrel processes area over here, and we can take this masking and generate a new subtool at a precise thickness. So let's say I want to take this masking here, I want to offset it by two millimeters and create a new ring. So using this, just set two millimeters here, now I click masking to geometry, it's now going to process this, and now it's going to give me a new subtool based off that masking. So the inner dimension should be that same size that we originally had, so that 17.32 millimeters, and should now be two millimeters thick. So now you can take this and use the mandrel processes to generate ring shapes, and then come through and now sculpt on these inside a ZBrush, and then export them out as well. So quite a few different options where you can use the Ringmaster plugin here to generate ring designs quickly inside a ZBrush. Once again, if you'd like any more information on the processes inside the Ringmaster plugin, just simply click on the Ringmaster logo here, and this will open up the cheat sheet. And in here, you can find information on all the features inside of Ringmaster. So that is it for the functionality of the Ringmaster plugin. Happy ZBrushing.